right, sorry about that. All right, but welcome back to the next video. Hopefully y'all have learned something. I know I've made like probably like five hours worth of videos already. And I know it's been a lot of me rambling on, but honestly it wasn't that much rambling. I feel like I covered a lot of important topics and uh, some of them I probably t talked about a few times, but like if you didn't understand it, then you probably haven't played enough deathmatch to, to know what, what I'm talking about. But if you play a couple games, maybe you start to like appreciate some of the things I'm saying a little bit more. Um, but I think I've covered everything quite well. And again, you, some of these things, you just got to keep practicing them. And I would, again, recommend practicing a lot of these against the AI. The AI is good enough to practice a lot of this stuff against. As you can see, the AI is kicking my butt right now. So it, it's, um, if you're trying to get better at deathmatch, right, you don't need to have the, you know, I know the community is relatively inactive a lot of the time, but, like, you can still get good without the community. What the hell? crazy all right so the next thing i want to talk about is <clears throat> like split pushing and stuff like that so you probably already noticed or you would have noticed but they already killed it i like to build so i like to build these siege workshops out in front like this and so one of the reasons why i like to do that is that whenever you're going to go for like a push or anything like that you're always going to need siege you're always going to need traps you're going to need um onagers you're going to need you know, you don't always need onagers, but you need trebs. To push a building, you're always going to need trebs or a siege ram, or a ram, right? And so, um, like, and if you're not, if you don't get siege ram and you just get uh, capped ram, onagers are still, like, usually sieves that don't get capped ram, they still get onagers. Onagers and trebs is still, like, a perfectly, like, onagers aren't going to kill the buildings necessarily, but they do a good job of defending, like, they're good, like, a, a offensive unit. Right? And they also can be de defensive as well. But anyways, I like to make these siege workshops up front because it creates like an artificial choke point here. So I can always delete these siege workshops if they're not in my favor, but they always work good for me defensively because if they make for, if they make rams and they're trying to kill this castle, well, the siege, the siege workshops are here, right? And so it kind of an, is annoying because if I have range units and then I have melee units or something like that, then, mm, how do I explain it? Or, I don't know. Like, yeah, there's just a choke point here, and if they have like a bunch of paladins or something in, in the like, rams or something like that, they have to go through the workshops first. Like I, this wasn't like a, a very good choke point here, but I can even make it smaller, like two tiles or whatever. And if I had like CA or something or some range unit, I can just like camp on the other side of the workshops and then prevent them from coming through here, like pretty nicely. The other thing is too is that usually I'll have some onagers. I'll have some onagers, or I can make some onagers with the siege workshop. And if I see them coming with rams. I can just again it's a choke point for the for the rams to have to go to, to get to the castle so they have to kill the workshops first and while they're killing the workshops I'm attacking them with onagers so that's just an, another good reason again I advise putting them in front of the castle rather than behind the castle because if they're behind the castle then that kind of it, 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 there's like a pros and cons because like the thing is like if they're in front of the castle they're more likely to get killed so if you need onagers then it's better to have them behind the castle sometimes because uh, then it doesn't they can't stop your production of them so definitely if you know if you feel like you're losing if you feel like you're getting you know you're losing ground here definitely add you know have some siege workshops in the back so it's probably good to have them both in the front and the back if you can afford it but um but yeah if they go for rams yeah you have onagers there um or if they go for trebs like say they go for trebs here they got a treb shooting here i have an on i have a siege workshop here i can just make like a uh, onager or ram and they have to worry about that like if they're trying to split if they're trying to like catch if they're trying to like um Let's say I have this um, castle over here, and I have two siege workshops here. Well, if if they're just trying to trap it down with like one single trap, they always have to be kind of worried that I'm gonna pop out with a siege or an onager and just kill the trap, right? So that, that's kind of the nice thing about building siege workshops. They're really cheap relative to the, the resource or relative to the total amount of resources that you get in the beginning. And the other thing is nice is that like units in this game tend to like prioritize buildings way more than they should. And so if, again, if you have units back here, and then you have Siege Workshop, and then they have units that you can target in the middle, then like some of their units are going to target your units for sure, but then a lot of the other ones will just target the building, which is just like, I know it's like the worst thing in this game, honestly, but but yeah, so having the Siege Workshops up in front is very beneficial, and then again, like if you're split pushing, you're always going to need like some Siege probably, so again, it's just nice to have, so, <laughs> so like here on this side, I'd probably, that's probably too nice. Not, whatever. I'd probably build the castle and then just build some siege workshops like that. 
I'm like a TC probably here. But ideally, I would have built the castle, the castle out here. But I think at the time, I thought there was something there, which clearly there's nothing here anymore. All right. Um, and then as far as like what units you're going to make when you split push, by the way. So in general, it's just going to be whatever units are your... Um, in general, the units that you're going to make for the split push are just going to be um, whatever you normally make for your unit composition. Um, so in this case, I was making Helbs and Siege Onager. And um, so yeah, so what I would do here is I would make these buildings. So I make the make the siege workshops. Then maybe I make like two raxes. I could make stables. I could go for some paladins. That's not a bad idea. I could go for more raxes. Could go for champions. Champions are always good later on in the game if um, the golds run out because they always champions are going to do good against um, trash units for the most part. So you could go for champions as well. Um, or yeah, I mean. It's whatever it's whatever you're, you're thinking about doing. I probably wouldn't advise going for ranges too often. Like ranges usually aren't. Uh, I don't know. I, I feel like range units generally aren't that good for split pushing. Like they're not. Um, like, how do I say it? Like, I mean they're good for split pushing, but it's a lot harder to uh, range units rely on like good control in order to get like good trades usually, because let's say for example. Um, Let's say, for example, that um, like you're gonna like if you have CA and Paladin, and your CA are in behind your Paladin, and their Paladin are fighting your Paladin. That's a pretty decent trade for you. But if their Paladin are attacking your CA, then that's not a good trade for you because the CA do not have a lot of armor and they'll die quite and they'll die quickly to Paladin. And so it requires that you micro the CA in order to um, take a cost-efficient fight there to keep them behind the other pa Paladin. But like when you're split pushing frequently, it's very hard to to be able to keep control of the range units to prevent for you from having like terrible trades, right? And so it's one of those things where I think it's typically better to go for um, um, infantry and stable units. So and then some siege. I think that's generally the case. But you know, like the thing is too is that you could always if if you did get like CA or something like that. You could always take some CA from your main pack here. Like, say you have like 60 CA. You could always take like 20 CA, run off to the side with, and then have some like paladins or helms or something and some rams. And then and then push with the CA, you know, set them on a different control group, run to the side, help push with them. And then once you've, you know, got pushed back or whatever and you're waiting to remass your units here, just run the CA back over to the middle, right? And, and, and that's fine. That's a really good use of it. I just don't think like adding ranges on the side in general is a really good. It's, it's not that uh, doesn't seem that seem that great to me at least. So I, like I said, I would stick probably to helps helps and cavalry. And to be honest, like in ter terms of trash wars, the combination of like um, helps and um, like full helps is going to be full helps and it's going to make full helps will be the com a mixture of helps and um, cavalry. But cavalry and helbs beats every other combination. So like scouts and helbs will beat helbs and skirms. Um, helbs and scouts will beat full scouts. Helbs and scouts will beat skirm scouts and helbs. All those things. The only thing it loses to is full helbs. So, um, and if you have rams in front with helbs, then in general, uh, you know, if the, ram the the helps have to target the rams, so your your helps and cavalry should probably do better. So it's not too too much to worry about. The other thing is, like I said, you probably want some trebs. Um, and then and then lastly, I'd say don't send units one by one in. Don't send like one ram at a time, like your first ram. Don't just send it in to attack the building, right? Because if you do that, they're probably going to react to the first ram. And then they're going to realize that, like, oh, oh, this guy's trying a massive army to split push. They're going to send more units to, to prepare for it. The best thing to do is mass up a couple rams or a couple trebs or something like that. Like four trebs, five trebs, <clears throat> or like five, six rams or whatever, right? Some military units. Push and then push all at one time. Because the thing is, is that it's going to require a lot more. Uh, they're going to have to commit a lot more military to the side um, when they do when they do notice that you're attacking. And and if they don't react to you right away, 
you're likely to do a lot more damage than you would have done if you just had that again one ram and then they react to it right so um and then the thing to be cognizant of is that when they do react to it they're going to have to commit a lot more if you do add a lot of rams or something like that they're going to commit like quite a bit to it so um what you're going to want to do is in other areas you need to push other areas as well because now like because they're committing so much to this particular side you're either going to want to come over and reinforce when they like like they're going to send more units over to this side so you really have two options either use what military you have maybe on, on this side or in, in on the left side or whatever right and push there or you're going to want to send some of this army preferably whatever army is mobile so if you're like CA or something like that or Paladin, send that army to the side as well. And basically, again, they're going to send some army here. They're going to keep some army here to try to defend, but then they're going to send an army here. If you send army over here as well, like even more army, then you're still going to have the numbers to push them here. And then they're going to be like, you're going to be able to do a lot more damage because now again, they have to react by sending all the armor here to here. And by that time, you should have already done quite a lot of damage if you had a lot of siege units. So... Um, so yeah, that's that's one situation. Another situation is, again, uh, another pretty good. And, and again, when you're split pushing, usually, you're, usually you want to split push when. Um, usually you want to split push when you are, um, when the area on the on the flanks or whatever is more valuable than maybe what you're trying to push in the middle, like in here. This is all flat ground here. This doesn't provide a whole lot of value. For me, like I can push from here to like here, but the difference between castle here and castle here isn't as important as the difference between a castle here and a castle, you know, or like a castle here and a castle here. If I get a castle here, now I have a really good control of this gold. So the thing is, is like here again, a lot of the stuff I can talk about, but in the actual game, I'll just totally mess it up. But it's true. So it's just about getting better at the stuff. But but yeah, getting a castle up here is a lot more valuable. So the thing is, is like what you want to do in in this particular case but then you also got to look, you know look at the defensive thing too is it you know is keep is getting a castle here maybe better for me because then it gives me this castle to fall back on versus like if i lose this castle where, what's my position going to be at then right that's also important to, to factor in but but um because the thing is is that um like there could be like a uh, in this case there's a gold here right but there could be like a instead of a gold there could be like a really nice hill here right and there aren't any hills here and so the thing might be to again play defensive here and when you're playing defensive you have that castle right for the defensive it's a defender's advantage plus you have the extra closer to your tc right defenders advantage or closer to your military buildings defenders advantage right because you have defenders advantage here you should be able to have more military units on this side if they try to push you here so again you you defend here let's just say there's a hill here too Right, you have a big defender's advantage. You don't have to have as many military units here to trade efficiently with them and defend. So while they're trying to push there, you have extra military here, push here. And basically that's gonna force them to either commit to this and and try to push this, and maybe they do push this, but then lose all of this, or they have to back off of this, probably still lose some here, but but that not they can no longer go for this. Which again, if they decide to back off, then that might be a cue for you to either, again, go over here and try to reinforce, which, you know, might be good because it might actually help you secure the position. Um, or push here, you know, try to push here while their army tries to go here and defend or whatever, right? So there's a lot of kind of ways to think about it. Again, I would probably, now that you guys are get. uh, these are kind of like the more advanced um, deathmatch videos, I guess. So I know, like, I've got in like five hours, I've basically covered like the whole start and like how to play deathmatch. And hopefully, y'all learned a lot. Like, that's what I hope. I hope all y'all feel like, okay, I just need some practice now, and I'll, I'll be a good deathmatch player because that's that's what I, I feel like I've set y'all up for. But um, but yeah, that's more advanced strategy. Or a lot, even like the top DMers are. They try to employ this stuff consistently, but you know, they they mess up too. But, um, but yeah, like I said, uh, split pushing is all about, is split pushing is like literally half about like them not reacting in time. And the other half of it is, is, um, is like unit composition. But like I said, unit composition at lower levels, it's not going to really mean much. It's just about who's reacting faster. 
Um, so another other tips for split pushing and stuff like that is like, or just like the game in general is you could number your buildings. Like this is something I've been trying to work on recently. Just having your having like my my buildings up in the center here, right? Center buildings on one control group, then have the flank on like another control group. Like um, so, in this particular case, I put this on six, and then another one here. I put these on eight. And the nice thing about using control groups here is that um, you can just quickly go to the location here, basically. And I think this is probably the fastest way to queue, honestly. Like, you could go down here and, like, you know, if I wanted to go here, I could queue barracks like this, but honestly, I feel like it's much faster to just go to the location and then just tap the key a couple times or whatever. Usually, like I said, you're not going to make too many. You make probably at most, like, 20 units on this, on, like, a flank before you're going to push if you're split pushing, right? Um, but, um,. Um, but yeah, it's still, it's still nice to have the go-to otherwise, I mean, again, you can use your mouse to go to the, uh, you can go to it as well. It's just not as fast, I think. Um, so, but yeah, it's definitely nice when you're doing like the, when you want the buildings to come from a specific area though, like for in this, in this case, like I don't want, if I, if I, if I'm fighting here, right, and I have buildings here barracks here i don't want my helps if i'm rallying to here i don't want my helps coming from here to here right and like a lot of people are now using like the go to all barracks hotkeys and stuff like that go to all stables that's nice and all but the problem is again if you have units that are going through the end of, like next to the enemy units and they're just going to die as soon as like they cross paths then that's not very good it's much better if you have some groups of groups of buildings can make sure you're producing from the right buildings and again like if you just go to it like this that's fine otherwise if you had a lot of barracks at home you could just go like this and then bam select all buildings and that's just using shift you just click on the building and it picks it right so so yeah so we covered basically a lot of stuff here like the only things i can think of that i didn't really cover here is like how many villagers do you want on each resource um for each for different build composition for different builds um what other things do we not cover how i use the market which again i'm not really experienced in myself so i don't, don't want to talk about it too much over time i'll learn how to use it better um <laughs> what else I guess it's like a general rule of thumb, you're not... Oh, what the hell? This monk here, down. For like general deathmatch, you like in... Um, so usually in deathmatch, people either play mirror or random sieve, but mirror is probably more common. In mirror matchups, like it's kind of like an unwritten rule, but usually if you get bombard towers, you're not supposed to use them. I think the same... It doesn't really, I guess, apply for, for watch towers or like just towers, other towers in general, but... Typically, if it's a non-mirror matchup, you're not supposed to make bombard towers. And then also in like team games, kind of making bombard towers is kind of frowned upon. But I don't know. I feel like I don't know. It's whatever. You know, I think bombard towers are. There's some matchups if you play non-mirror that bombard towers are pretty essential, but to to be able to stand a chance. But it's whatever. You know, the thing is, if you play deathmatch and you play non-mirror, then you know, there's just going to be some matches where you just can't win. Or it's going to be really tough to win. Because, like, late game, like, there's just some civs that are clearly better than the others. And there's no there's no way around it, really. So, if you're going to play, it's, it's not a big deal. If you lose games, it's whatever. You're just trying to improve, right? Um, but, gosh, my voice is just dead. <clears throat> um, but, yeah, just, I would say, <coughs> excuse me, as a beginning to the game, just first thing you should probably work on is just trying to understand the sieves try to understand what what buildings to go for next thing getting your buildings nice and tight like this trying to again maintain the right number of villagers on houses just work on that first then try to do that while you're also trying to raid again getting the correct number of you know, units raiding um, and then after that uh, try to expand try to get uh, again like I said outpost castle siege workshop get those stuff get, get those stuff pumping up um, get your town centers down 
Um, remember, maybe not commit too much to um, trash or too many villagers. Um, and then, yeah, actually one thing I didn't cover was, so if you do go for like paladins or something to raid, we, we talked about how making units and then you want to split them up on the sides and stuff like that. Again, that's that's based on whether or not, if you, again, if, if you have a really, uh, all your resources are forward, then you're definitely going to want to try to focus your defenses in one area. You don't want to lose that one area that has all your gold or whatever at it, right? But if you don't, if it's more safer, if it's safer, or, you have, or, if, or if you know you have more military because you did better on the raid or something like that, then you can split the army up on the sides. And um, one thing that I think is really helpful is like, again, the initial raid is only effective at some point, but you know, those people are trying to expand, the other players are going to try to expand as well. And that means they're going to try to put TCs on gold and stuff like that too. And so um, if you have like a mobile unit, like a paladin or something like that, um, then it's it can be really nice to um, after the initial raid start to mass maybe a couple paladins five or six on one side five or six on the other if you can and um, try to snipe the villagers building the town centers because a lot of times like you saw here when I made these gold TCs I didn't have a bunch of helps camping out these these town centers I literally had nothing there so it's something like um, it's something that if you do have the mobile unit or whatever or even if you don't sometimes you can do it with the other units. But just get some units to kind of go in and try to deny the town centers because if you can prevent them from taking uh if you can just kill the villagers and then get out with the paladins or whatever unit that you have right and prevent them from adding town centers um or cat or denying castles right that's really gonna that can really make a big impact later on especially if they forget to add those town centers later right it, it could be it can be very um it can be very damaging to their um economy which again will hurt them much later on so uh yeah i'm not sure whether or not i should keep talking or or i think i'm going to try to make one more video and then i'm going to think about some things before i start the video so i can talk about and um and that'll probably be the last video for now and hopefully again y'all have uh i've had a pretty start uh salt will have a pretty solid start to deathmatch um again it, Make sure your hotkeys are good. I, I can't stress that enough. That if your hotkeys are not really good, it's gonna you're, it's gonna be hard on in deathmatch. And like I said, I have a video. It's quite long, but it may, might be worth the watch. So, anyways, I'll, get, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.